Hi guys, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at uh, some certain lithium companies that you can look forward to uh, increasing in stock price, especially with the rise of electric vehicles and renewable energy as well. So the, uh, the rise of EV and what it means for the lithium miners and manufacturers. So with the rise of EV, you can clearly see that there'll be a correlation between uh, the manufacturers and miners of lithium and how the electric vehicles will be using this lithium because they're used in electric batteries and how the miners will benefit from this. And today we'll be looking at some of the most promising lithium mining companies uh, that will like grow alongside this boom. Uh, so this boom kind of happened late 2018 uh, where lithium stocks kind of bursted uh, like through the roof and then in 2019 a lot of these stocks uh, once again crashed um, and once again in 2020 with the rise of EV uh, um, uh, these stocks are once again going back uh, on the uptrend so with 2021 and a lot of new electric vehicle companies also starting to uh, start manufacturing and companies such as NEO or, or Tesla increasing their productions uh, we can see that these companies uh, will very much likely benefit uh, with increased sales. Uh, the demand for electric vehicles has been rapidly rising uh, and the global lithium demand went from 4,700 uh, metric tons this year uh, to will be expected to go to almost 120,000 metric tons by 2024. And the annual production of electric vehicles is set to rise from 3.4 million vehicles this year to 12.7 million vehicles in 2024. So we can see alongside this, the number of sales will also increase at a very similar uh, kind of ratio. And only one third of lithium produced uh, currently uh, is sold to electric vehicles. And that figure should rise in the coming years, uh, meaning more sales and more profit for these companies. So the first company is Jiangxi Gunfeng Lithium, uh, and it has the ticker symbol of GNENF uh, in the OTC markets. Uh, so it's China's largest lithium compound manufacturers, which makes it the third largest in the world. Uh, it has resources and operations internationally in places such as uh, Australia, Argentina, China, Ireland, and many other smaller uh, regions such as Cuba, uh, Brazil, uh, etc., Chile. Um, it, it also has made a deal with Australia's Reed uh, Industrial Metals and is farming Law, uh, raw lithium in Western Australia, which is one of the largest uh, lithium mines in the world, uh, had its IPO back in 2018. Uh, it also has a stake in Lithium Americas, which is America's largest lithium company, uh, in part ownership in this lithium project in Argentina. And it's been increasing its ownership or stake in this uh, ownership, uh, like uh, this project, uh, going from 37% in 2019 um, to 51% this year and is set to increase. Uh, it's also been extending out to the European market, especially the cars, and it's made a long-term supply de uh, deal uh, with BMW, uh, set to go until 2024 at the minimum. Uh, and their stock uh, also covers uh, lithium polymer batteries, consumer batteries, power batteries, energy storage batteries. So these are all the things basically they uh, sell that consists of uh, the product of lithium that they sell. So the next company is Alba Marley uh, with its ticker symbol ALB. I think that you'll find this in the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, since 2015, this has consistently been in the top three biggest uh, lithium mining companies in the world. Uh, it's one of the largest lithium producers. It has customers internationally, which is close to 100 countries. And alongside lithium production, it also pro uh, produces chemistry services to pharmaceutical firms. Uh, so that's kind of like two different parts of the business so if this lithium thing it doesn't like take off the way it expects uh it still has like another core business that it can fall back on uh it owns operations in us chile and australia uh, and it's also had multiple expansions on their green bushes mines in chile um allowing them to produce 1000 for uh, 145,000 metric tons of lithium to be mined per year uh until 2043 uh, so with this, especially with the lithium uh, demand increasing, uh, we will probably see this number increase. And especially with the number of that uh, metric tons that they're able to produce, will they'll be easily uh, they'll easily be able to keep up with the demand there. Uh, it's also made a one point one five billion dollar deal to produce a lithium hydroxide mine in WA, uh, and this mine will specifically be catered to making uh, batteries and lithium uh, ion batteries. Um, showing that they're kind of uh, so similar to the way 
uh, the previous company uh, partnered up with BMW. This is taking a more broader aspect, uh, recognizing the opportunity and uh, kind of pouncing on it uh, with profit and revenue to grow in the future. Uh, it beat its last earnings es uh, earnings estimations. Uh, it had $3.5 billion in revenue and $400 million in profit. Uh, these are both rounding numbers. It was more like 3.15 or 380 million, but these are just rounded values. And over the last three years, uh, its earnings per share has been count, uh, compounding 28% uh, per year. Uh, the last company is Saucy Dad, the name uh, there. Uh, the ticker symbol is SQM uh, for people trying to like research this company. Uh, it's the world's largest lithium producer. It has offices in over 20 countries and customers in over uh, 110. Uh, once again, going back in the fact that it's the world's largest lithium producer, uh, it has a 32% earnings growth in the uh, earnings growth in the future, uh, which is almost one and a half times what it is in the market because the market set to grow at 21%. Uh, so that's amazing. Uh, it has a revenue growth of 14%, which is more than double its competitors and industry, which is around 6%. Uh, its uh, EPS is set to triple by 23-24 based on an. Uh, analyst expectations, so this isn't guaranteed, but it's expected it's earnings per share going from around uh, 60 cents a share to close to $2 a share. Uh, it has significant growth potential uh, and is kind of the kind of the best place company uh, out of the three that I covered. Uh, and this growth potential is uh, set to occur over the next three or four years. It has a pretty solid balance sheets where the uh, assets uh, outplay the liabilities. Uh, not completely, but it's a pretty solid balance sheet. And it has a 56% year-on-year increase on sales compared to their last year sales, uh, even with this pandemic. So I would suggest once this pandemic comes to a close, this will uh, probably increase even more. So these are the three companies that I covered. Overall, I'm pretty uh, bullish on this lithium trend, especially with the rise of EV as like an industry as a whole. Uh, but do keep in mind that uh, with these stocks, uh, I didn't really dive into the health or the safety or the business model or the financials of the company. Uh, I mainly just talked about the growth benefits. So make sure you research that yourself. Um, and just a note to make majority of these stocks, the last three that I covered are traditionally overvalued. But given the way the market is playing out, I haven't taken it as a factor because the market's PE continues to rise significantly, uh, signifying a continuously uh, increase and more overvalued our market as a whole so compared to the market these companies aren't extremely overvalued however they are uh, on a more traditional sense uh, but as always do your own due diligence uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one uh, bye